to the road. This is Daryl Eaton, and thank you so much for taking your time to spend this time here with us as we encamp around God's Word together. Again, so excited to be here with you during this session of The Road. It is indeed my privilege, my pleasure, my honor to be able to share and convey God's Word to you in such a manner that it adds relevance and significance to your life. Real, real quick now, let's, let's give some disclaimers. If you've been with me any period of time, I just have to give these disclaimers. First off, I don't know everything, and neither do you. I'm not perfect and neither are you. We have the possibilities of being incorrect. So what I suggest to you is that you go get your own Bible, follow along with me as I pull out the scriptures and passages out of God's word. That way you'll know for yourself whether what I'm saying is correct or not. And God will give you the revelation of his word. Secondly, there's some advertisements that we have and I want to just put this information out to you right away. Listen, if you'd like to uh, be a part or, or get more information from us, just remember that the row itself is actually an outreach ministry from Missions to Men. I am the founder and pastor of Missions to Men. It is always my privilege and pleasure to bring this particular outreach to you to help you change your patterns of thinking to be successful by using God's Word. How exciting for me it is that, that you and I know that, that for whatever reason we do some things, we're always able to move forward. It's not enough for us personally to, to look at where we're going in life and how we do some things. It's only for you to get in line with God's word. That way you'll know for yourself what it is you need to do. I don't have to tell you. It's not my responsibility. It's all up to you whereby you will know for yourself what it is you need to do in life. Okay, listen, lastly. With some of the products that we have, and when I say products, I don't make widgets, but I do have CDs, I have books available, DVDs. I want to make them available to you. Listen, you can go to our website at mistressdemand.org, click on the tabs, order products from us. Uh, even if you want to give to the ministry, any monetary gifts of love are greatly appreciated. You can go to the website. There's a way for you to give donations. We have outreach ministry at the Skid Row and to the prisons behind the walls. We're doing what I believe God has called me to do in order to help men change their patterns of thinking to be successful by using God's word. Also, come and join us at one of our men's Bible studies every Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the great city of Inglewood, California. We actually hold a men's Bible study there. Its location is 8722 Crenshaw Boulevard. We're one block south of Manchester. If you're familiar with the city of LA at all, come on out. There's parking there for you, so you don't have to worry about parking. Uh, come on out and be a part of what we're doing. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to be to have some real talk with real men about the real God, not a real God, but the real God, uh, the only true and living God. And would love to be able to offer that to you uh, where we as men can get together and talk about some things specifically out of God's word that pertains to us. All right. Now, with that, let's go right into the word for this afternoon. I want to pick up where I left off at as far as last week. We're talking about adding to your foundation. I was saying this is that when 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 we talk about your foundation, your foundation should base, be based off of God's word. It is faith in God's word that you should have. But you have to add something to that foundation. I use the, an analogy that rosin needs a hardener when we talk about glue and compounds and mixing glue and compounds together. Rosin itself needs to have a hardener added to it or else it doesn't get hard. But when the rosin is added to the, 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 the hardener, then the hardener doesn't stay liquid anymore because it needs the rosin in order to stay hard or to become fixed. And the rosin needs the hardener in order for it to do its job, for it to do the hardening. So consequently, the same way it is with God's word. And I was mentioning that how whatever you are delivered from, wherever you come out of, I was speaking specifically about some of my men that I teach on a regular basis who we consider to be behind the walls. They're, they're actually incarcerated and some are incarcerated anymore. But I, I said that if no matter where you escape from, if you leave a place that you escape from, it's very important for you to add something to whatever you're doing so that you don't go back into that same environment again or go back to the same situations. I'll also share with you that remember that part of how you think has to do with 
depression, oppression, and possession. Depression or oppression is the daily oppositions that we have that oppress us on a daily basis. We all have something to deal with, you and me both. I mean, it's not like we can walk through life and just meander and think that everything's honky dory. You know, it's like it's not like a trot through the woods. You know, it's just, it, there's things we have to do on a daily basis. Secondly, if the oppression or the daily opposition, you are able to use God's word properly in order to change how you think, that weight of that thought from you being oppressed on a daily basis will become weight in your mind. That weight in your mind is now depressing. That's what's called depression. There is a thought that becomes heavy in your mental intellect. And if that thought becomes so heavy that you're no longer able to push it, just like a weightlifter. Uh, for those of you that lift weights or do any type of uh, if you're athletic in any shape, form, or fashion at all, even if you go out for long walks or brisk walks, you know that at some point you get to a place where you have to push a little harder in order to maintain a pace or to keep the same stride. And, and so likewise, it is in your mind on daily opposition that you deal with. It's imperative for you absolutely imperative for you to stay faithful and focused on whatever it is you're doing. You have to stay on point with what it is that you're doing all the time. So that's why it says you have to add something to your foundation. All right. Now what I want to do, let's go to Philippians chapter two, verse five. Remember that is my thread. Philippians chapter two, verse five. That's whereby I launch from anytime I'm teaching. I always use this passage of scripture that God has given me for the ministry. This is my springboard, so to speak. This is my launch pad, so to speak. This is where this is the mechanism whereby I fire into the spirit of God based off his word. All right. Here in Philippians chapter two, verse five, you have your Bible. Say I have it. If not, go get it. <laughs> Don't take my word for anything. You need to read it for yourself. As reputable as I believe I am and as right as I want to be about everything I do, I could be wrong and make a mistake and your life can't be hinged upon what I say as being correct. Your life has to hinge upon what God's word says is correct, but you need to see it for yourself. Here in Philippians chapter two, verse five, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, again, I'll just do briefly here. The apostle Paul was teaching at the church of Philippi. He was teaching the Philippians, those who were believers at that time. And non-believers also, a whole bunch of people in the crowd, just like the church today. You just like the church today. And so Paul was saying and making a very emphatic statement that you have to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, which means that at some point in your life, you have to willingly make a decision that you're going to learn to think like Christ so that you'll be able to act like Jesus. That's what this says. Now, we could break it down. There's some other teachings that we have. I would suggest that you go out to rmcmedia.com and uh, go to watch some of the replays. You'll see all the archives out there from the row, the row, R-O-W-W. Or you can go out to YouTube and just search in YouTube and type in the row and you'll see other uh, product or other pre program uh, uh, segments that we have based off what I've been teaching about. And you need to go and get some of those so that you can catch up to where we are, because it's important that you understand that you can't separate Christ from Jesus. It's not possible. You can't have Christ without Jesus. You can't have Jesus without Christ. But you must know the dynamics. You can't separate it, but you must know the dynamics. OK, very good. Now, adding to your foundation, let's go to the scriptures in the book of Second Peter. Second Peter. Remember, the God's word said that grace is sufficient, but it never says that faith is sufficient. It does say that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It does say that the just shall live by faith. It does say that we walk by faith and not by sight. But when Peter comes along and he's now teaching us, he's letting us know that, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here in the book, in the book of Peter, rather, in the book of Peter, when it comes along and starts teaching us, hey, wait a minute. It says, wait a minute, you got to add something to all of that. Yes, it's the foundation. Yes, it's it's it's. I look at faith as being the hardener. But I see the rosin and stuff that you got to add to the hardener. See, faith, see, faith is the hardener. Faith is solid. Faith does not move. Faith is always fixed. But the things you add to it would be the rosin. So, so there's something you have to add to your foundation, no matter what you believe in, and especially when it comes to the things of God. Here in the book of 2 Peter, 
Here in the book of 2 Peter, and I want to start reading it, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. It says here, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who, are, who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. See, you have to have knowledge of God and Jesus. That's what I say is that you can't separate Christ from Jesus and you can't separate Jesus from Christ, but you must know the dynamics. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 20 says that you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, talking about Christ, as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust. Now, it says that you have not so learned Christ. Now, this scripture here in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. So, so you have to get some understanding of the dynamics of who Christ Jesus is. It's very important that you add some things to your faith in which it, where your understanding takes place. In the book of 2 Chronicles, I think it's 2 Chronicles uh, uh chapter 22, I think. Don't, don't quote me on it. Go, go study this for yourself. But it says to set your heart and soul. So that means that my soul is my mind, my will, my imagination, my emotions, and my intellect. It tells me to set those with my spirit, which is with my heart. My spirit embodies in my heart. So it says I have to set those. In other words, I've got to add to my spirit what's in my soul, and I have to set those and sync those together in order to serve the Lord your God. That's all this goes together with how you think. And if for whatever reason you aren't able to change your patterns of thinking, let's say, for instance, that you go to some ministry and, and I love the body of Christ. I love all of the body of Christ, just like God and just like Jesus, just like Christ. There's some things that they didn't love about what was being done or the people were doing. But the body, he, God loves all of the body because he says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So. If you are whosoever, you're not left out of the love of God. God loves everybody. He just doesn't like what people do, and especially if they're sin. He certainly can't be involved with that. But he loves everybody. So don't get it, don't, don't, don't get it twisted where, where God doesn't love you because of whatever. It, just don't get that twisted. We ain't going there today. Second Peter, verse number two, one more time. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power, watch this, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. This is verse 3. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So we were called by glory and virtue. So we have some things based off him calling us. Verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these, through the great and precious promises that we have received through virtue and, and grace. Now watch this, watch this. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Verse 4, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these, the great and precious promises, you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And this is where we left off at last week. And I talked about having escaped. Here it says, well, let me read it again. It says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So understand there's some things you escaped, the corruption that's in the world that comes through lust. You've escaped that because he's been, you've been called. And you actually have access to the divine promises. But knowing this, here we go now. Here's where we left off at. This is where I want to pick up at today. Verse number three. But also for this very reason, because you have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. For this very reason, because you have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, for this very reason, because you and I have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence add to your faith. So here now we see there's something we have to add 
to the hardener. Remember I said I want to use faith as the hardener and everything we add to that is going to be the rosin. So we have to add something to faith because we had escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. We have to add something to our faith so we want to find ourselves giving place to the corruption in the world through lust again. Now, this is very clear. It's not my opinion. You have to understand how this works. It's necessary for you and I to be able to come back and forth and do these type of things. Always. Always. Here we go. One more time. Second Peter chapter one, verse five. It says this. But also for this very reason, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours, in other words, if you do these, and abound, you can continually do them. You will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you're going to know some things based off of what you add to your faith. I want to go back and, and very, I don't know if I want to do it uh, succinctly or every week, but I like to identify some of these things uh, uh, and give some definition to each one of them and what they really mean. We can't just take time to read God's word and just go past it and not know exactly what each one of these ingredients mean. It's like, you know, eating spinach. We really don't know what's all in spinach that's good for us, but if you are, are, are a scientist or a, a biologist or, or you can actually break apart the, the, the segments and, and dissect the leaf of spinach, you would know what ingredients that are in there that's necessary for us. I take a multivitamin. I, I read on the label all of the different nutrients that's in that particular vitamin, and I have to add that to me in order to sustain my, my, my body, uh, to help it at least sustain as long as I possibly can, you know, eating right, proper sleep and all those things. But I still have to add to that. It's not enough just to think I can just eat the food that's on my plate and that's just enough. It's not enough. We have to add to that. Adding to your faith is like supplements. God's word all in itself, that is the core of what you need. But there's supplements you need to add out of God's word that will benefit you long term because it says that because we have escaped the corruption of the world that comes through lust. That means that lust must be a very powerful tool for stuff to come through. And remember this, I've taught before. You got to go back and look at some of the archives. You can't be tempted by anything that's not already in your mind. Say, well, Pastor, what you what I don't believe that. I mean, I mean, I'm tempted all the time. Yeah, but that's that's only because of what's in your mind. You can only give attention to something if you're aware of what it is. If you hear a horn blow, you'll give attention to that horn. It gets your attention because of what's in your mind. If you're walking down the street and all of a sudden you see something, I don't care what it is, you just see something. I'm just saying something. All right, we ain't gonna identify what the something is. If you're just walking down the street, you just see something. You're going to give attention to it because of what's in your mind. Now, now listen, I guess I have to say it a bit, be a little bit more plain, and I don't want to be clinical, but I want to just put it out there because it, this is Mr. to Men. You're walking down the street, and you're looking at something that you know that you should not be giving attention to that does not have anything to do with God's word at all. I don't care whether it's a billboard. I don't care whether it's another person. I don't care what it is. And you know it has nothing to do with God's word at all, but you give attention to it. That's actually part of the world that's through corruption that you that you initiated into that, that idea and that thought by lust that's in your mind. You can't be tempted by anything that's not already in your mind. It's not possible. It's just not possible. It doesn't work like that. Not at all. So let's go back and look at this one more time. Now, one more time. This is second Peter chapter one, verse five. It says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Virtue is the very first subsidy or supplement you need to add. Then it says, now to the virtue, you have to add something to the virtue. In other words, even virtue by itself is not enough. You add virtue to faith and then to the virtue, you have to add knowledge. If you don't know how to use God's word properly, 
even though you know it's right, it does you no good. It's no benefit to you. No, it's really no good. I know it's really better for me to get eight hours of sleep. I know that, but I don't often do that. There's times that I may get four or five hours of sleep, sometimes maybe two or three hours of sleep uh, in a 24-hour period. Sometimes I'll do a whole stretch 24 hours nonstop. So there's some things I have to add to virtue, and that's knowledge. It's not enough to know to do good if you don't know how to do good. So you got to add some things to that. You, you, can't, you can't know that you drive a vehicle on the freeway at 55 miles an hour and you don't know how to drive a vehicle. That You can't add anything good to that at all. That, that doesn't work. So we have to, to our faith, we have to add virtue, say supplement number one. Then to virtue, we have to have knowledge. It's not enough to know it's right to do and don't know how to do it. That's why it's critical and for me personally in my assignment in the kingdom is to teach us how to change our patterns of thinking to be successful by using God's word. Just like you and myself and others, I, I know some things that are right to do. Oftentimes, I really don't know how to get them done. It was a long time before I knew how to replace a, a, a light bulb or a lamp on the headlights of one of my vehicles. You know, I'm looking at it. I could see that it was burnt out. I went to an auto parts store and they, they told me how to do it. But when I went out to my car, I'm looking at it. It didn't look like how they explained it to me. So consequently, even though I wanted to do something good, I didn't have the knowledge to do good with. And it's the same way with God's word. We can read it, we can study it, we can pray it, we can speak in tongues, we can fall on the flow, we can, we, we can, we can do just like David in sackcloth and ashes, if, in ashes if we like to. But if you don't know how to properly use it, it won't benefit you. It's necessary to add something to your foundation. <laughs> one more time. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. It says here, But also for this very reason, because... You have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This is the only reason. This is because of this reason, because of this very reason. The word very is a superlative. It adds other, uh, uh, it has, it adds a heightened level of enunciation to it when it says for this very reason, not this, this reason, but this, this very reason, meaning this reason really alone, Th this very reason right here, because you have escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. For this reason, you must add something to your faith. Remember, I mentioned before, you can stretch a rubber band and you can let it go. And that thing will pop right back and it'll be just. It, 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 but if you don't put some boundaries, you can put a rubber band and stretch it out and then put stakes or put sticks, stick pins. And that rubber band will never move. That's because you added the stick pins to where you wanted that rubber band to stay. It's the same way in your mind. Once you set your mind on things above. And not on things of this world. You must begin to add to that foundation so that you don't find yourself acquiescing and going back and find yourself wrapped up in the corruption that's in this world that comes through lust. Amen. Listen, I'm finished for this session. I want to thank you for taking your time to spend the time with us here. It's always a privilege and a pleasure and an honor for me to be here with you. I can't say enough about how much I appreciate all of you that continue to give and to support. And if this message has been a blessing to you, I want to just offer you an opportunity to give monetarily back to the ministry. Look, you can give and you can send it to P.O. Box 93478 in the City of Industry, California, 91745, and address it to the row. We'll make sure that those funds get to the proper place. Also, send us an email if you like this. When you go out and you see this on an archive, always click underneath for like. I want to know if you like it. If you don't like it, don't waste our time. Don't waste my time. Don't waste your time. Let's make sure we're doing something that everybody likes. Now, I'm not going to change what I do just to please you, but I would like to know if you like it or not. Okay. Lastly, you can send us an email at info at missionsdemen.org. You can write us in our office at P.O. Box 93478 in the City of Industry, California, or you can go to our website, missionsdemen.org. You can find out anything about us that you want to have, no matter what it is, where, it's, where you are. We'd like to get information out to you. And until we're together again, everybody repeat this after me. Say, a different future is possible for me if I'm willing to change my mind. A different future is possible for me if I'm willing to change my mind because the thoughts I take will determine
the decisions I make. And my decisions will define my destiny. Change my mind. And remember, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Now, just stay tuned. The announcer has a very important message that I'd like you to listen to, and we'll see you next time. Amen. Welcome again, and thank you so much for taking your time to spend this time with me. My name is Daryl Eaton, founder and pastor of Missions to Men. My assignment in the body of Christ is to teach men like yourself and I how to change our patterns of thinking to be successful by using God's word. The thread that I use that God has given me is Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. It says to let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Everything starts with a thought. Everything starts with a thought. I mean, everything starts with a thought. I don't care if you need to go use the restroom. You still have to think about it first. So everything starts with a thought. So what I have been given the assignment to do in the body of Christ is to teach men how to extract the principles out of God's word pertaining to men and how to, to, to use the mechanics of applying it to your life to be successful. I teach on the soul of man. I teach on how we think. Because Philippians 2.5 says to let this vibe be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. I want to share briefly just part of a teaching that, I, that God gave me. Uh, your thoughts are mine. Your thoughts or mind, M-I-N-D. And let me take you quickly into the scriptures and share some information with you. This actually is out of the book of Genesis. We're going old school. Genesis chapter 11. In Genesis chapter 11, we see here Noah and his sons coming to a place. And here's what the scripture says. It says, now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they, T-H-E-Y, journeyed from the east that they, T-H-E-Y, found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they, T-H-E-Y, dwelt there. Then they, T-H-E-Y, said to one another, come let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They, T-H-E-Y, had brick for stone, and they, T-H-E-Y, had asphalt for mortar. And verse 4 says this, and they, T-H-E-Y, said, your thoughts or mine. Now, now you're listening to somebody. Just like Noah and his sons. They, T-H-E-Y. And they ended up saying something. Just like someone will say something to you. Because your soul is your mind, your will, your imaginations, your emotions, and your intellect. And if you do not know how to change your patterns of thinking to be successful by using God's word, they gonna tell you something. And then you have to know if it's your thoughts or mine. So I want to give you the mechanics out of God's word, how to properly articulate the principles in God's word, that when you're out in the environment that you're in, no matter what anybody tells you, you'll know how to properly listen to what they're saying, but at the same time, be able to line it up with God's word and what he says, your thoughts or mine. You have to understand whose thoughts you're listening to because whatever decisions you make in life, it's based off of who you've been listening to. It's based off of what you've been watching. It's based off what you've been eating. It's based off of your environment. There's three things and three areas that are critical for your success and destiny in life. And that is your environment, credible others, and repetitious information. So whatever environment you find yourself in, you are taking some thoughts automatically. You can't control the thoughts that come to you, but you can certainly control the thoughts that come into your mind, your thoughts or mine. Allow me to go deeper into the word with you in this teaching. We want to share the mechanics of it with you so that you will be successful in applying the principle of God's word in order to change your patterns of thinking to be successful by using his word. Remember until we're back together again, remember now, my thread, Philippians 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. We saw just briefly that, 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 that Noah and his family, they took some thoughts by what people were saying to them. And you have to decide for yourself, it's going to be your thoughts or mine. And we have to decide based off of God's word, whose thoughts we're going to listen to. So let me again, one more time, just reiterate. My assignment is to teach you how to change your patterns of thinking to be successful by using God's word. Everything starts with a thought. A different future is possible for you if you're willing to change your mind. Your thoughts are mine until we're together again. Missions to men. Let this mind be in you, 
which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. We want to thank you for taking your time and joining us for Real Talk On Demand. If you want more of what you just heard, visit our website or give us a call. We look forward to hearing from you. Order today. Thank you for being a mission partner. Together, we are making it happen. If you're not a mission partner, I would encourage you to become one today. As a partner, your monthly love gifts are supporting M2M outreaches, prison ministries, and much, much more. You will receive monthly newsletters, access to M2M live stream, real talk on demand, and more. Visit us on the web and partner with us today.